Good morning, Living Truth. Uh, welcome. Sunday morning again, digital experience. Uh, we are so excited to have you. Uh, you may notice a few uh, extra people up on here on the platform with me. That is because last week was National Youth Day. So uh, we are going to have a little bit of a youth service, but everybody, please stick around. Uh, stay with us. We're just going to have a wonderful time of worship, and Adam's going to bring the word today. So I'm going to ask Alexia if she will open us up in prayer, and we'll get right to the worship. Sure. Father God, we thank you so much uh, for bringing us this beautiful day. God, we just want to glorify you today. We want to honor you uh, and we want to worship you, Father God. So just flood every heart, flood every home, um, have your way and make your presence known uh, in each place, Father God. Uh, we love you. We worship you. We praise you in Jesus name.
Good morning, Living Truth family. Thank you so much for joining us on this Youth Sunday. Technically, we know last Sunday was Youth Sunday, but we got to push it back to this week, and we're thankful for you joining us. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to my teenagers. We miss you and love you guys. We can't wait to be back in our Student Life Center having uh, fun-filled times in Jesus. Um, Again, thank you this morning for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for this opportunity to speak. Um, I'm honored to have the privilege to speak to you guys this morning. Um, I wanted to get started with a quick story, okay? So y'all bear with me and enjoy the story, okay? Many years ago, a young man applied for a job as a Morse code operator. When he arrived for the interview, he walked into a large, busy office filled with loud noise and clatter, including the sound of the telegraph in the background. Each applicant had filled out a form and was seated until they were to be summoned into the inner office. There were seven other applicants in the room, all of them going over their resumes, uh, making sure that they look good, that they know what they're going to say, and this guy just goes in and sits down, Um, and he sits there waiting. After a few minutes, the young man stood up, he crossed the room to the door of the inner office, 
and walked right in. Naturally, the other applicants perked up and wondered what was going on. They muttered among themselves that they hadn't heard any summons yet. They assumed that the young man who had went into the office made a mistake and would be disqualified. Within a few minutes, however, the employer escorted the young man out of the office and said to the other applicants, Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming, but the job has just been filled. The other applicants began grumbling to each other, and one spoke up saying, Wait a minute, I don't understand. He was the last person to show up here, and none of us even got a chance to be interviewed. He got the job? That's not fair. The employer said, I'm so sorry. But for the last several minutes, while you've all been sitting here talking amongst yourselves, going over your resumes, yada, yada, the telegraph machine over there has been ticking out the following message in Morse code. If you understand this message, then come right in. The job is yours. None of you heard it or understood it. This young man did. The job is his. Thinking on this story, uh, I feel like some of us some of us are those seven other applicants where we know what we're supposed to be doing. We are getting things together. We're looking at the outside, making sure that everything is right, but we're not fully tuned in. We're not fully listening to everything going on around us. And we, we miss, we miss what is going on because we're not properly listening. The young man in the story he sat back while everybody else was doing their own thing and he was just listening and he heard the message that was being ticked out and he was, uh, he was able to get the job because of it. Put, it. put it in today. We, being children of God, we're sitting here, we're waiting, we're prepared. We've got our things ready to go but we're so focused on what's going on outside that we're not, we're not listening to what's going on inside. We're not listening to God. God is speaking to us, but because we have become distracted with the things around us, we may not be hearing God. I want to go this morning to 1 Samuel chapter 3. It says... Now, the boy Samuel, I'm reading from the beginning of the chapter, and we're just going to read a little ways down. <clears throat> it says, Now, the boy Samuel was attending to the service of the Lord under the supervision of Eli. The word of the Lord was rare and precious in those days. Visions, that is, new revelations of divine truth, were not widespread. Yet it happened that at that time, as Eli was lying down in his own place, now his eyesight had begun, begun to grow dim and he could not see well. And the oiled lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go lie down again. So he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know or personally experience the Lord. And the word of the Lord was not yet revealed directly to him. So the Lord called Samuel a third time, and he stood and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be that if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood and called as the previous times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. That's where I want to stop right there. Speak for your servant is listening. As we go about our daily lives, our daily routines, we get caught up in the hustle and the bustle, and we let those outward things distract us from what's going on inside. It distracts us from hearing that voice of God, that voice of God that is calling you to greater things, 
the one question that I have on my mind tonight for all of us to answer, are you listening? Are you listening to that voice, that voice that is on the inside of you? Um, I like to think about it this way, the way that I was taught. When we get a gut feeling about something, when we know that we are supposed to be doing something or we're not supposed to be doing something, we get that gut, that just internal instinct. Guess what? There's a reason for that. The Spirit of God lives inside each and every one of you, and He is speaking to you. This, that gut feeling, it's your knower. This area, this region, it is your knower. It knows what's going on. It knows what you need to do. It knows what you don't need to do. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening to that voice that's telling you to go deeper? Are you listening to that voice that's telling you to hold back? Are you listening to that voice that's telling you, hey, why don't you try doing it my way instead of doing it your way? We have to, we have to hone in on that voice. We have to open up our spiritual ears and be, be ready to hear the voice of God that is calling us to go into greater things. Um, we have to eliminate the distractions in our life. What distractions? Gossip. Family family can be a distraction sometimes. Your job, um, extracurriculars, whatever, whatever is going on in your life, it could be distracting you from what you really need to be focusing on. If you're not focused on the things of God, if you're distracted by what's going on around you, it's going to throw you off. Whenever you get distracted, you fall. Case in point, look at, look at Peter. Oh, man, I love Peter. As bold as Peter was... When Jesus came out to them walking on the water and Peter said, Lord, let me come out to you, Jesus straight up said, come, come out, come to me. So Peter gets out of the boat and walks on water. As I've read that, I'm thinking, man, what's going through his head at that moment? He's got to be thinking, oh my gosh, look what I'm doing. I'm walking on water because he heard the voice of the Lord and he was listening. But when he quit listening to the voice of the Lord and he allowed the distractions around him, he let the the fear just soak up inside of him when he saw the waves coming in and crashing around him. He got scared. He got distracted, and he fell. Thankfully, Jesus was there to reach out and pick him up, as he is for you. When you get distracted, you fall, but Jesus is there to reach your hand up. He's talking to you, saying, Child, it is okay. I love you. Basically, we need to hone in on, on the voice of God. We've got to hone in and, and be aware of what God is saying to us. I, I personally, lately, have, have, been, have been stretched in this, you know, praying and listening. And am I really doing what I need to be doing? Am I doing what you have, have called me to do? And it's amazing what God will, will speak to you when you actually listen when you answer him when he calls you have to be paying attention to what's going on in the spirit the things that we battle the things that we that we go through they're not fleshly they're not worldly it's all spiritual and we have to be honed in and paying attention to the spirit of god that lives inside of us because he will always 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 lead us in the right path and in the right direction Open your ears. Open your spiritual ears, people. Hear me when I say that. Open your spiritual ears. God is speaking to you. God has greater depths that he wants to take you to. He has greater things in store for you, but you can't get to them if you cannot hear his voice. The Lord is a good shepherd. All sheep know the voice of their shepherd. The voice of the enemy they do not know, they run away from it. Listen to the voice of God. You will know it when it comes. It's not always going to be loud and audible and in your face. Most of the time, it's going to be that still small whisper. And it's in that still small whisper that God takes ordinary and makes it extraordinary. Open your spiritual ears, guys. Let God speak to you and just follow what it is that he has go, what he has in store for you i'm going to pray father thank you for this day i thank you that you have 
just given us an opportunity to to be together to to listen to your word and to dive into it more father i thank you for the words that you've given me to speak tonight lord i just pray that that they would reach out to these people lord that they would go out and that people would hear your voice they would open their spiritual ears they would open their spiritual eyes to see what's going on lord but more more importantly to hear your voice to hear you calling them to hear your direction to pull pulling them in the way that they need to go father lord i just pray that that you would give them give them the courage to listen to your voice give them the peace to know that it is your voice and give them the boldness to not just listen but to do not be just listeners but doers and to follow your word. Lord, I thank you for my family. I pray, Lord, that they are safe. I pray, Lord, for the healing of this nation, of this town, of this world, Father. Lord, I pray that that your hand is in this world and that you are surrounding us all with your love. Continue, Lord, to guide us in everything that we do. Keep us wrapped up in your love and just continue, Lord, to bless my brothers and my sisters. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you this morning. It's been a blast. Um, I know it was short and sweet, but we're youth. You know, we we like things short and sweet. And don't forget, we have a drive-in service tonight at the Civic Center at 530. We're going to have the praise team there. It's going to be a good time of church. We got a couple of speakers coming tonight. Remember, 530 civic center make sure that uh, you stay in your vehicles we park one parking space apart from each other it's going to be a good time we can't wait to see you there god bless you guys we love you